Good morning and happy Palm Sunday to each of you. My name is Reverend Tiffany and I'm the pastor of Wesley to all of you that may be first time worshipers with us. We're so delighted that everybody is in worship together this morning. Uh, you will hear a little bit more of a formal welcome a little bit later in our worship service, but I do welcome you to our virtual worship experience. I have a few announcements that I want to lift up for the good uh, of our body this morning. Uh, today marks the beginning of what we as Christians would refer to as Holy Week. And Holy Week is this week in the life of our church where we celebrate the last week of Jesus' earthly life. So this week, we will not have any administrative meetings uh, in honor of Holy Week, but we do have some varying activities uh, as we celebrate this week. On Wednesday night, we invite all of you to log on to Zoom. Uh, at 7 p.m., we're going to have a congregational movie that we watch together. The movie does begin at 7, so actually you might want to uh, log on just a few minutes before then. But Wednesday night at 7, we will have a congregational movie. Thursday night, we will participate in a Monday Thursday dinner uh, experience. Um, many of you know that Thursday night would have been the last night that Jesus lived on earth. And then it was on that night that he got together with his friends and had a meal together. So we are going to have a meal together on Thursday night. Uh, we invite you to, to log on uh, to Zoom. And then once you log on, we're going to break you up into smaller groups. And so you'll have an opportunity to have dinner and conversation with smaller groups of people. If you are willing uh, to be a dinner host, we have the conversations and discussion guide for you. Please make sure you let us know that in the church office so that we can um, make sure that we divide you up and, and make sure um, that everybody has a wonderful experience. And then Friday, Friday is Good Friday. There's going to be a virtual worship experience uh, in which I participate as one of the preachers of a service with uh, focusing on the seven women that were with Jesus uh, throughout his ministry and on that last day uh, of his life. Uh, so we will send the link out. You will receive many emails this week telling you about all of these events. We hope that you will take the time to join us and participate with us however you can. Okay. So as we continue in our worship experience now, Miss Betty is going to lead us in our morning prayer as well as our Wesley welcome. Palm Sunday is what one may consider a Sunday of confession, of promise, of absolute faith, of praise and worship. Please prepare your hearts and mind as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for being the awesome God that you are. We come with our arms stretched wide to give you the honor, to give you the praise. Dear God, we ask you to release the burdens that we are bearing. Some of us are in distress with the weight of the world on our shoulders. We are in a world faced with brutality, injustice, racism, storms, the fight of COVID-19, chaotic elections. People are dying. People are in need of food and shelter. People are fighting drugs, alcohol, and sex addictions. We even have families facing separations from their loved ones, loss of jobs and businesses. Heavenly Father, I can go on and on, but you know all, and we have assurance that you are in control. This is why we should stay in constant prayer. I'm here to let my sisters and brothers know today that prayer is greater than worry. Yes, prayer is so much greater than worry. When we come to you in prayer, dear God, help us to lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are. For we know that you are a forgiving God. We know that you look beyond our faults, dear God, and you see our needs. I just want to thank you, God, for your forgiveness and seeing my needs. I want to thank you for making every day a better day. 
I am a living witness on how good you are. I am a living witness on your spiritual powers, your healing powers, your loving powers, your financial powers, and your business powers. I know how you have made a way for me when I thought that there was no way. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that I will continue to look up to you and keep my eyes on the mark of the high calling. Thank you, Jesus, for you have truly brought me from a mighty long way. All of my help comes from you, God, and I thank you. I thank you for a loving family. And dear God, as we transition to return to our Wesley home, the building at 1725 Gervais Street, we thank you for this return. We pray for your protection and guidance over our pastor, Reverend Tiffany Nolan Borkin, her family, and each of our church members, friends, and our visitors. We thank you for our church continuous growth and the success of our church missions, goals, and ministries. For you have brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Some of our members will not be going back with us because they have no longer, they are no longer on this earthly journey, but or miss your journey of eternal life. God, we ask that you continue to watch over their families. As we come to a closure, help us to pray without ceasing, to be anxious for nothing, and know that our God is a powerful God. We walk by faith, not by sight. And lastly, dear God, instill in each of us to carry your light in the community and to be your light in the world. Let all of God's children say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Good morning, my Wesley family, friends, and visitors. Welcome to Wesley's virtual worship services. Hosanna in the highest as we celebrate Palm Sunday. My name is Betty Spells Price. I have been a member of Wesley all my life. Wesley is my home church. In fact, my 90-year-young parents, Rhoda and Curtis Spells, remain members of Wesley for over 70 years. Thanks be to God. In fact, this Sunday represents 25 years that my husband and I first met at Wesley. In the book of Matthew 18:20 says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. God's presence can really be felt among the Wesley Church family. So first time visitors and friends, if you are looking for a church home, please consider Wesley. We are not just any church. We are so much more than that. Wesley is a loving community. Wesley is worshiping with others, praying for others, and being involved in the lives of others. So connect with us at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or check our website at wesleychurchsc.com. That website address again is Wesley Church sc.com. Shalom, y'all. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. The strength of God is reaching out to each one of us, and he's going to strengthen us. So come with us and sing along with us. Let us praise God and give him all the glory because he, we know that his hand is going to strengthen us today and always.
This morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 5 through 9. Now hear these words. Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humbled and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Why don't you bow with me for a word of prayer? God, we thank you so much for this day and for this opportunity to come and to give you glory as we begin to think about this last week of life that you lived on earth, oh God. We bless you for this Palm Sunday, oh God, as we remember the way that they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. We pray now, God, still understanding that lest the preacher comes, there can be no preaching in this place. So come on, Holy Ghost and have thine own way. Speak, Lord, for we, your people, are listening. Speak, Lord, we, your people, are listening. We pray this prayer and all of our prayers in the strong, strong name of Jesus. Lord, we as your sons and your daughters, we say amen, amen, and amen. On this Palm Sunday, we continue our Lenten sermon series that is entitled Restored. Finding redemption in our mess. For those of you that have been with us all six weeks of this series, including today, and for those that may not have been able to join us each week, I remind you that we began our series declaring life is a mess, and though we often try to hide it, we too are a mess. We have asked the question, are we Christian motivated? Or is what you do all about you? We have discussed what it means that though many of us are looking for God, in fact, it is God that is looking for us. We are the lost ones. And it is Jesus that looks up and says, come down out of the sycamore trees of life and let me, let salvation come to your house this day. I shared a, a few weeks ago that, that Kareem and I often work to, to hold the chaos of life at bay. And yet there are times when chaos and mess and the messiness is not only hard and difficult, it is intrusive and it invades our lives in ways that force us to deal with it. However, no matter how intrusive, no matter how difficult, no matter how unfair, no matter how incredulous, God, y'all, God can be trusted. God's love, God's radiance, God's majesty supersedes the messes of this life. Last week, last week we talked about what it means that sometimes Sometimes we are called to clean up a mess that we did not make. Jesus saw our mess and the messiness of the life that we as humanity created, and he decided, I love them. And because they are mine, I will do and I will clean up their mess. I will step in. I will scrub them and clean them 
just as a mother cleans up after her baby. Well, today, today on this Palm Sunday, I want to talk a bit more about Jesus and his willingness to not only clean up after us, but his willingness to intentionally enter into a hot mess. As we enter into the world of our text, some would argue that Jesus is at the height of his ministry. He has been teaching and preaching and, and building a reputation for himself over the last three years, and now he is about to enter into Jerusalem. His popularity is at its highest. He is coming towards the city, and they are literally treating him like a king. The crowd is spreading their cloaks on the ground and people are cutting and waving palm branches like the one that are on our altar this morning. They are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, y'all, Jesus is literally experiencing his 15 minutes of fame. And yet, though Jesus hears their shouts, though he knows that the shouts and the admiration and the applause are for him and the kind of Messiah that the crowd is expecting, the kind of Messiah that they are wanting, he also knows very clearly who he is and who God is. Jesus knows the, the kind of Messiah that he will be, and unlike so many who crave the fame, so many who desire the admiration and popularity of the people, so many that dilute themselves, so many who let go of their convictions and their values because they may not coincide with what the people want, he is not deterred by the shouts. He's not deterred by the accolades and the mindset of the crowd. You see, Jesus, Jesus knows that popularity is fleeting. That Jesus knows that people are fickle. Ask any of our past living or even our present president of the United States. It does not take long for people to assure you that your ratings will begin to drop. And even the more you as a leader have to decide who are you going to be? What are you going to believe? You have to decide what are you going to do? Are you going to go along to get along? Are you going to do it the way everybody else is doing it? Are you more concerned with the right thing or the popular thing? Think about Jesus as though he is focused, so focused, so sure, so certain about his truth, his value, his worth, his conviction, his purpose. He is so focused that he not only is not concerned about the opinion and the favor of the crowd, but he is willing to enter into what he knows is an absolute mess because of his love for you and for me. He knows that these same people that are shouting Hosanna will by the end of the week turn their backs on him and not only abandon him, but demand that they crucify him. Jesus is willing to die. He is willing to lay down his life for what and who he believes in. Y'all, what do you believe in? What are your convictions? As we asked all those weeks ago, what are your motivations? Is there anything that you are willing to lay down your life for? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I tire of such nonchalant Christians. I tire of people who say, I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus. Well, so what? So what you are a believer if you don't do anything about it? The Bible says even demons believe. What does it matter that you believe if you don't live it? If you don't do anything about it? Faith without works is dead. The gospel is something that we do. And because 
of this. Jesus does the ultimate. He lays down his life. Now, I want to, to be clear that the Romans, the religious leaders, the crowd do not take his life. Jesus gives it. Jesus purposely enters this mess knowing that in order for restoration to occur, in order for redemption to come, in order that there is no barrier, no more separation between God and humanity, he allows them to murder him. Jesus is a man that understands that a price, y'all, a price has to be paid for people to be able to live into the kind of relationship with God that they say that they want and yet they constantly reject. Jesus is a man that understands that the price has to be paid in order that others can have a tomorrow. Jesus is a man that knows exactly what the mess is and still he is willing to go into it that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. Now y'all, I too want to, to be clear that it's not only Jesus that has a price to pay. If we're going to be true believers, if we're going to walk this thing out with God, if we're going to trust him the way my colleague Junius Dotson trusted him, then we got to know that there is a price to be paid for what God calls us to do. Jesus knew he had to die. And there are some things in our lives that we too got to know has to die. There are parts of us, things in us that contribute to our mess and the messiness that we consistently find ourselves in. And the thing is, I don't have to tell you what that thing or what those things are. You know, and you know your vices, you know the things that are inside of you, you know your personality, you know what makes you tick. You know that things, the things that have led to your mess. And you know the things that lead you to mess after mess after mess. You know the heart issues that must be addressed. And, and most of all, you know that addressing such issues, dealing with them, just as Jesus dealt with the mess of humanity, it will not be easy. There will be pain. There must be sacrifice. There must be intentionality within your will and your willingness to, to take up your cross and follow him. Your God, God will scrub us clean. God will heal. God will restore and God will repair. The promise of God is that she will breathe life into dead things, yet there are forces, and not just flesh and blood, but there are also spiritual things. There are soul things. There are heart things that must be dealt with, knowing that there is a price that we all have got to pay if we're going to leave mess and leave messiness behind. The good news. The good news on this Palm Sunday. The good news is that Christ, y'all, Christ paid the ultimate price, and Christ is with us every step of our journey, redeeming us, maturing us, strengthening us, and preparing us to live, y'all, to live into the fullness of who it is that God has created and called us to be. So on this Palm Sunday, and throughout this Holy Week, I challenge you to pray. I challenge you to seek the Holy Ghost. I challenge you to consider what, what are the things, what are the parts of me that I must ask God to heal, to touch, to deliver me from? What are the things I got to let go of? What are the things that I must let die in order that I can work through and ultimately leave my mess and my messiness behind? God never, God never promised easy, y'all. God never promised easy, and yet God promises, I'm with you. I'm with you, and I 
will intentionally enter into the mess with you as you journey. In the name of the Creator, and the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, people of God shall say amen, amen, and amen. The doors of God's church are open today. And they're open not because I say so or any preacher says so. But the doors of God's church are open today because God says, I love you. God says, I love you so much that I would intentionally enter into a mess. I would intentionally leave glory and put on flesh and come and walk with you. I would intentionally allow you all and allow humanity to say, Hosanna, knowing that you will say crucify me by the end of the week. But I love you. I love you that much that I will intentionally come in and I'll clean up a mess that I didn't make. I want you to know the day that on this Palm Sunday that if you make up your mind that you want to walk holy and you want to walk boldly with your God, that all you have to do is say, Lord, I say yes to your way. I say yes to your way. I surrender my all unto you. And the moment you do that, salvation belongs to you. The very moment you do that, your eternal life begins and you begin to live into the new relationship with your God. Now, I remind you, this is not easy, but it is worth it, y'all. It's not easy, but it is worth it. You talk to God, have a conversation, and after you and God have that conversation, you come and you talk to me. Shoot me an email. Call me in the office. Connect with us via Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Go to our webpage, wesleychurchsc.com. Be in contact with me, and we will talk the more about what it means to continue on this journey with your God, and we'll talk more about what it means that there is a body of believers called Wesley. We want to know you, and we want you to know us. We want to walk with you. We want you to know that all of us are striving for the same thing. We're all trying to get back to that place from which we began in the very beginning of being in the bosoms of our God. So know the day. Know day today that this is an open invitation, not limited to Sunday morning, but whenever it is that you make up your mind. God, I say yes to your will. Say yes to your way. As we continue now in our worship, I also want to remind you that as you contemplate such things, we take a moment to say thank you to so many of you who continuously give financially to the ministry of Wesley. If you have a desire to give of your tithe and your offering, we remind you that we have a giving link. You can go to our website and Information there will send you to our app so that you can give electronically. Certainly, uh, you can give physically as you place a donation in the mail. However it is that best works for you, we ask that you would give uh, and that you would give generously, and we thank you. We thank you so much for sowing seeds into this ministry so that we can continue to do the work of the kingdom. So now, on this Palm Sunday, as we ready ourselves to end our worship experience, I invite you to join me now in a closing prayer and benediction. God, we thank you so much for all that we've been able to participate in this morning. We pray, oh God, that our worship has been a sweet smell to your nostrils and a wonderful sound to your ears. We pray, oh God, on this Palm Sunday and as we enter into this holy week, that we take serious thought about what it is that you did for us when you, didn't, when you decided to lay down your life, to give your life in order that we might have life. God, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. We honor you and we praise you. We pray our prayer in the strong, strong name of Jesus. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. People of God shall say amen, amen. That website, again, is wesleychurchsc.com.
please connect with us via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 